Walk into any given church near Christmas and you will find a wreath with candles in it. The wreath and candles serve as a reminder of the work God has started and continues to do in our world. The loop of greenery is called an Advent wreath. Advent is the beginning of the Christian calendar and comes from a Latin word that means coming or arrival. During Advent, we celebrate God moving into the neighborhood as Jesus, and we look forward to his return. Each week, you will notice that a new candle is lit in the video. Each light guides us to focus on a different attribute of this season of excitement. The candles represent hope, peace, joy, and love, four things we could use more of right now. This week, Dave will focus on hope. Hey everybody, I'm Dave. I will tell you that if I'm building a snowman in my yard and it comes to life, I'm going to freak out. Just telling you right now, that is scary to think a snowman would come to life. But if you watch the show, the fictional show, Frosty the Snowman, you'll see that when the snowman comes to life, the kids are all happy. They're, they're, they're joyous and they follow the snowman all around the town. And I go, why would you do that? Why wouldn't you be scared too, kids? But I think that the reason they don't is because winter is the darkest and coldest time of year. And for them, Frosty the Snowman is a huge bright spot in that time. This week I was reading a, uh, an article about some towns in Northern Alaska where the sun just set for the last time for the next two months. The sun cannot even rise uh, that far north for the next two months until the end of January, believe it or not. And I complain because at 530 around here this time of year, the sun sets and it gets dark. I think that's why I like Christmas lights so much. And I love to go around and see the Christmas lights on people's houses because this is the darkest time of the year and sometimes the coldest but not always but definitely the darkest and those Christmas lights give me a sense of, of joy a sense of hope uh, that it won't always be this dark every time of the year all of us go through dark times don't we dark times in life times that just just nothing seems right everything seems kind of bleak uh, maybe it's just a bad day Maybe it's a bad week. Maybe it's 2020. Maybe you're dealing with uh, the darkness that comes from your own mistakes. Maybe you're, maybe you're dealing with anxiety or depression. Maybe you've lost someone that you love. Those are dark, dark times. And sometimes they can be so overwhelming. When those dark times happen, we are desperate for light. We're desperate for something called hope hoping that somewhere there's light at the end of this tunnel, hoping that somehow things won't continue to be this way, hoping for better days. The people of Israel and Judah, the people that God had chosen to shine his light to the world, were going through some very dark times. You see, in this, what we're going to talk about today, um, these people uh, for years had been kind of doing their own thing. Their kings, their, their leaders had led them astray for years and they were distracted by all the things of life and going to other things uh, that weren't really that important. And as a result, they neglected God. They, they left him and, and, and did not put him as important as they should be. God knew this was a problem. God saw it happening and he kept saying to them, stop, go the other direction. If you keep going this way, it's just gonna get worse and worse. Things are not gonna work out for you. And to top that off, all the nations around them were getting stronger and stronger and were threatening to conquer them. It was a very dark time for Israel and Judah. In that dark time, God sent a prophet. His name was Isaiah. He had a message for the people and it went something like this. 
The people who walk in darkness will see a great light. For a child is born to us, a son is given to us. The government will rest on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Someday, God was going to send them a child, a child that would come and save them. This darkness would not last forever. There was a light coming at the end of the tunnel. Hope was going to be born. And at an even darker time for God's people, that hope came. The child was born, born in a manger in Bethlehem. His name, Jesus. Jesus moved into the neighborhood, as it says in the book of John. He became God in the flesh. God come to earth to be with us. Hope had come. Jesus, described as the light of the world, a light that could not be extinguished by darkness. He came and he took on the darkness of this world, the pain, the suffering, the death, the sin, uh, the things that were weighing us down and making our world so dark. Jesus came and he took it on. He took it on on the cross and from the grave, rising again. He overcame those things. He conquered those things. He put them in the past. He did that for us. He came, he conquered, the light beat the darkness. Hope had won. But that hope was not just for Israel. It wasn't just for people of long ago. That hope was for us, for all of us. Pain, suffering, evil, all those things still around. They still are things that overwhelm us even today here in 2020. But there is somebody that has overcome those things and knows how that can get done in our own lives. Maybe you today are overwhelmed by the darkness in your life. Maybe you are overwhelmed by the darkness of our world. Just remember, there's somebody that has conquered that darkness. There is a light that shines in the darkness that cannot be extinguished. And his name is Jesus. And in Jesus, we can find light and hope, a light and hope that will never be extinguished by any darkness, even in the darkest times of our lives.